Welcome to another video from Creativo Solutions. Our mission statement is simple, we are creatively adding value to help find solutions. If you have any comments or questions about this video, feel free to post them below. Consider subscribing to the channel and keep following us on social media. We have a Steemit page, we're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and keep watching this YouTube channel. Having posted a video on how to post on Steemit, this is a recap in terms of how the progress has gone so far and what I'm going to be showing you here is how to add value on the actual Steemit website. How do you add value not only to your blogs but also to those other blogs that are on the same social media platform. First thing you need to do is go to the Steemit website https slash slash steemit.com and here you'll see what topics are trending, new, hot and promoted. You need to log into your account. So I'm going to click login and then I'm going to insert my password. Once I've inserted my password, I then log in. Now I'm logged into my Steemit account. So I can look at my blog currently. As you can see, the last time I posted was yesterday. Currently, I've got in terms of influence 39 here and 69 followers, 207 posts, 34 following. Um, this particular blog was created in December 2017. If I go to my wallet, you can see I have a few rewards here, obviously from posts that I've posted in the last seven days. Those payouts have obviously been made and I can now claim my rewards either from the content that I've created as an author or from the curation rewards that I have accumulated over the last few days. So I'm going to click transfer to balance and that's going to be added to my account over here. As you can see, that changed just by a little bit in terms of adding more Steam power to my account and a little bit of Steam dollars as well. So currently, this is what my account looks like. And in terms of my history, you can obviously see I've been claiming my rewards on a day-to-day -day basis. And this particular account was started 19 days ago. So now you might be wondering, well, how do you add value to the community? Well, the first thing is obviously posting something that's relevant, that you're going to be creating in terms of content or finding information that you feel would benefit the community. Right now, I'm going to go to my blog. And here you can see in my blog, I've obviously posted I'm going to first check if there are any comments from or replies rather to the comments that I had posted yesterday. So if I go to the re replies tab, I'm going to see all the replies here for the different comments I had posted. Here I've got a reply from Nino Brown that said thank you very much for my comments and homework submission. This was one of the blogs that I had also commented on. They said welcome, um, thanks for reading and here they said you're most welcome, stay tuned for the next part. Um, there's no comment or reply there and those I've already responded. So when looking at this particular tab, you'll see in the reply section, these are replies that you've received recently over the last 24 hours, depending on um, how often you're actually checking your account. So I haven't checked this account uh, for the last 24 hours. So 16 hours, 17, 18 hours, I've obviously commented here and I've got some feedback. These ones I have commented because there's a reply, a response here in the actual replies tab. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go to these posts and I'm going to uh, respond just by maybe showing my appreciation for them having commented or replied to what I had said on their blog. So let's have a look at the first one. I'm going to open this in a new tab. So the first one, um, this is obviously a new account only with 25 influence. They've upvoted my comments. Uh, this was an account looking at um, how the rich get rich, the value of um, access into a B quadrant. So if you've been following any of uh, Robert Kawasaki's books, you would have seen he has this formula that they describe. Um, I would recommend you search, just Google it and you can learn more about that. So I thought this was quite an interesting post. It's quite short just to support someone um, who has started a Steemit account. I chose to post something in support of their blog. So that helps 
add to the community. So in terms of Nino Brown's account, he responded by saying thank you very much. So I'm just going to upvote that just to show my appreciation and supporting um, someone on the community. And as you can see, my vote currently counts one cent towards um, the Steemit uh, blockchain and Steemit as a social media platform. And I'm going to click a reply here and say, thanks for the reply. It's great supporting new blogs on the Steemit platform. And I'm going to even add more value by offering him to consider this application here called Steam Follow. So I'm just going to add that consideration here. Consider using Steam at Follower to help you increase the value offered on your Steemit accounts. So again, I'm not only thanking him for his reply, and I also upvoted his comments. I'm also providing a little bit of assistance to add value to this individual. Obviously, he's starting his account and he has 25 in terms of reputation. My account currently has 39. So let's help this smaller account to try to grow and improve. Post that comment. I'm going to click that button, post. And there we go. Now we've posted that comment um, to the reply that we received. And I look at the replies again. And you can see those are obviously the different replies that I've made to the comments that I've received. So that's what I would definitely suggest you do. Each and every day, we're logging into your account. If you have been posting comments on the posts of any of the other individuals in the community, I would definitely recommend you look at the replies and either thank them for the reply if you were asking, let's say, a question and they responded, or I would provide more value by continuing the conversation if that is required, depending on what the actual comment is. That's definitely something that I would recommend you do on a day to day basis. What I also look at doing in order to create more value on the community is in terms of my blog, I would look at different categories. So for example, I would look at the category accounting as one of the tags. And in this particular tag, what's trending currently, I can see someone has posted something recently, 11 hours ago, and this is looking at tax accounting for witnesses. Is there anything else? Three days ago, six days ago, 11 hours. Okay, so this is looking at, this is a university, New York University, Stern MS in accounting admission. Um, that's obviously in a different language, which I can't really respond because I'm obviously dealing in English. So that will be difficult for me to read and interpret the information in order to provide some value. This was from two days ago, two days ago. A lot of these are my posts because I've created content relating to accounting that I've shared with this community. So this was the most recent post in this particular tag, trending in accounting, and this is looking at tax accounting. So I would look at this blog and see, well, is there any way that I can maybe add more value to this particular post? Looking at this account, you can see this account belongs to some guy one, two, three, and they have 67 reputation. So their reputation is a lot higher than what my reputation is currently on the Steemit social media platform. Accounting for your Steam witnesses is an image. There's a disclaimer here. Please do not consider this legal tax advice. Consult your accountant or tax lawyer for the correct information in your jurisdiction. Obviously, Steemit can be used internationally, so you do need to obviously consult your tax practitioner for the best advice regarding taxes and paying taxes for the benefits that you receive through this particular platform. So they've given you some information here about companies in the US and the UK. And I'm reading through the information here. They talk about some requirements in terms of Microsoft, the SQL clients, keeping records, queries, 
using the query. So this looks very technical for someone with a background in IT or programming. I think they would find this a lot more useful. And remember, this post was aimed at the witnesses. So witnesses are individuals on the Steemit platform which have a much higher capability in terms of being able to program and contribute to the platform to make the platform better. If I look at that Steam follower website again, www.https, the steamfollow.com site, you can see here you can actually vote for an individual from the Steam platform as a witness. If I should show you what the witness looks like here, and let me also open up his account. You can see witnesses have very high influence and generally they have some sort of background in terms of programming or development. So they're actually capable of adding more value to this particular social media platform. And you can actually vote these accounts up should you support them. So I've voted this account, I've voted that account, I've voted that account and I've voted that account. So I've voted four accounts up in terms of accounts that I believe would be able to help add even more value to the Steam social media platform. So that's what I've done here. And you can obviously upvote this individual's account. This individual has 61 in terms of reputation. There's a little bit of a description there. They've got a certain amount of followers, posts, and they're following 80. And they're obviously responsible generally for the creation and maintenance of the Steam follow. So they've created this on the blockchain technology uh, based on Ethereum that allows individuals to make use of this decentralized social media platform. You can see they've posted two hours yesterday and you can see generally their posts are related to the daily Steam and Steam dollars price report. So it's looking more at information regarding the cryptocurrency which is used on the social media platform. So that's a witness. A witness is someone with very high level in terms of reputation and experience from having participated on the Steemit community social media platform. So that's what this tax accounting for witnesses blog is primarily focused on, those witnesses. So that would be the audience that would generally be reading this information. As I mentioned earlier, you can see this is quite technical because of all the computer programming language here. They talk a little bit about Bitcoin taxes. They talk about converting my Steam earnings into a fiat format. I'm unfamiliar with that, unfortunately, so I wouldn't be able to provide any value here. So I'm not going to comment or post anything on this particular blog. This is a bit outside of my area of expertise. So I'm not going to contribute here. And that's what I would recommend you do for all the different tags. So going back to my blog, you could maybe look at something related to education. So let's go to Steam at Education. Let's click that tag. And 11 hours ago, there's a blog post here regarding depression. Um, I don't really like commenting on more negative things. So depression to me sounds quite negative. So I'm not going to actually read that post. It's not a post that I actually want to read and maybe add value. Here, this says, let's talk about renewable energy. That sounds quite interesting. So I'm going to open that blog. Let's talk about renewable energy. Number one, looking at hydropower. This individual has a reputation of 55. They've obviously written quite a bit here regarding renewable energy and hydropower specifically. So I'm going to read through this information here. They talk about harnessing power. Obviously energy is important for human beings to, to live sustainably and we need to find cleaner ways of producing energy. And they're obviously looking at hydropower here. So that's important, regeneration of electricity. Um, they're obviously talking about other areas as well, sunlight, solar, wind. Hydropower is what the focus is generally here in this particular blog post. There's a few questions here to consider. Main objective is to explain or answer the following before the end of this article. So those are the three areas that they're going to be addressing. What is hydropower? How does, hydropower, how does a hydropower plant operate? How does harnessing hydropower affect us? There's a nice image here with credits. 
then again reading this information Okay, so I am familiar with hydropower. It's definitely looking at moving water that would drive um, turbines in order to produce electricity. That's my basic understanding of what hydropower is, and that's what he's describing here. Then he talks about some history, so background information. You can see there's num another image here regarding these very old systems of producing electricity where water would then turn that turbine which would be powering a generator to produce electricity. So that's quite fascinating. Talks about water mills, gives some background in history. Talks about the construction and how these mechanism, mechanisms actually work. He's always credited his images. And he's provided some information about hydropower now. So looking at more recent information, I click that link here, electrical generator, and that takes me through to Wikipedia. So you can see he has links in his actual post, which is great. Let's go back and let's continue going down his post. A lot of history here, which I'm not really interested in reading the history. I would like to know more about what does hydropower look like in the current state. I think that's more fascinating. That's what I'm actually trying to find. I know what hydropower is, I've got a general idea. I want to know how has hydropower changed in more recent times. So this is looking at power generation and conversion. How does hydroelectric dam operate? So that's the diagram describing that. Again, very technical information. Pros and cons of harnessing hydropower. It's definitely cheap. We're aware of that. It's definitely a form of green energy. It's clean, that's great, he talks about that, it does not release CO2. It's flexible in many ways. He talks about storage and outflow. Cons, okay, so that's interesting. Let's see what the cons are. I'm not too familiar about the cons. Um, I would have been able to identify those pros as well. So this is something interesting that I would focus more attention on. Water cycle dependency, the amount of precipitation determines the amount of water available. Okay, so definitely this wouldn't be able, you wouldn't be able to use this in areas that don't have sufficient water. The environmental impacts. Okay, that's an interesting one. That that takes the conversation a bit further in terms of um, we spoke about hydroelectricity as being a cleaner way of producing electricity, but there are also environmental effects because if we're using the power of water, you're obviously going to be looking at dams and rivers, and by creating these. Um, hydroelectric power plants near these rivers and dams that is going to affect the environment and the ecology the natural ecology in the area so I find that valuable that's something that I wouldn't have thought of and this blog has created that talk about atmosphere failure risks that's always a consideration and final thoughts and that's his blog. He's definitely credited all the various sources of information, so that's really well written. So I'm definitely going to set a reply here, and I'm going to say, great information covering hydro power creation. I had a general idea of what hydropower was or is your consideration for the disadvantages it was really interesting to read Never thought a system like hydropower could have negative impact on the environment. But as highlighted, Building a system near a river or dam 
may affect the natural ecology. Thanks for the great information. And I'm going to post that reply or comment rather to this particular blog and you can see my comment has appeared here and I've commented and I've added value to to this particular post so hopefully with more comments and with more upvotes this blog will become more and more popular and that benefits everyone in the community Let's, al let's also upvote this particular blog post and support good content. And that's what I would recommend you do, is find areas that you're interested in. So this was something that I saw from Steamed Education, which was also tagged in terms of science. Just to show you that, here at the bottom of the blog, you can see what the five tags are. So they've tagged science, STEAM, STEM, STEAM, edu STEAM ET education, Philippines, and uh, TOL Philippines. So that's probably the area where this individual um, is located, perhaps. But those are the tags that they've chosen to use when posting this blog to the STEAM at social media platform. So I clicked STEAM at education, and when I clicked STEAM at education, this was one of the posts that had come up based on the reputation of this individual on the social media platform. So that's what I believe is a really good value add that you can create that's simply responding and contributing valuable information or comments to really good blog posts that are on the community currently. That's what I would suggest you do to add value. And by doing that, if you help others, hopefully, in future that benefit would come to you in some other form or another. So that concludes this video. Just a bit of a recap of what I've been doing over the last few days. As I mentioned, my Steemit blog is only 19 days old. And I just want to share with you some information regarding how you can add value to the Steemit community. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing to the channel. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to post them below and we'll keep creating more videos to help you.